day two of our Turkish road trip sees us actually hit the road for the first time, but only for about an hour, as it's not far to our first stop, Selçuk, the gateway to the spectacular ancient city of Ephesus. Actually, this is the gateway to our hotel, which looks delightful, but we can't hang around because there's so much to see. Good morning from near but not in Ephesus. Um, this is the uh, Basilica of St. John, where apparently the evangelist uh, came and wrote his gospel and then died here, and the Byzantines built this huge complex next to the castle. Um, so uh, in we go. There was a church here uh, in around 500, which was in bad state of disrepair when Justinian and Theodora decided to build a new one in much uh, greater splendor. And it actually survived all the way through until 1367, after the Seljuks had taken over and made part of it a mosque here. But then an enormous earthquake levelled the whole thing. Here we are. Proper respect for St John's tomb. This is the tomb of St John. What wrote the Gospel of St John? Good Lord! What a what a thing. The reaction there of an Oxford theology graduate. You just can't buy an education like that. One thing he did tell me, though, is that the Book of Revelation, of apocalyptic four horsemen fame, does say John was based on the Greek island of Patmos. That's only 60 miles away, and the tradition that he came here sprung up in the second century. So, who knows? Speaking of serious theology... What are you doing, William? I'm being baptised, going to the baptismal font, into the waters. Which would have been cascading. here in ancient times of yore. Mm -hmm. And coming up towards the east, towards the altar, into my new life. Here we go. Days of yore, that's not very historically accurate. <laughs> Hello, look what we found. We've done Evidence some... of real people in the past. Ooh. It's a game. We know because it's very similar to what we saw in some baths in Rome, except there they had it all under glass and it was all... Um, beautifully preserved in here. It's just sort of lying around. People sat around and they used little stones on this grid here to play a board game. We discovered it. We're we archaeologists. No one even drew our attention to it. We just found it ourselves. That's how clever we are. <laughs> Next, we deploy that massive brain power on finding a proper Turkish lunch. The only way to prepare to digest one of the wonders of the ancient world is by lining your stomach with Mexico. Here we are, the big kahuna. Ephesus, coming right up. But first, we have to get through the gift shops. So this is the ancient Agora, I believe. Fake leather and fake bags and uh, ice cream shops. Authentic. Once through the veil of Mammon, all flippancy is swept aside by the splendor of the ancient city's ruins. Highlight is the Library of Celsus, the second century AD Shrine of Learning, pieced back together from its earthquake shattered ruins in the 1970s. What a rubbish library, in fact. <laughs> no books left in this library. This is where they would have been kept the scrolls. Yeah. Lorna would have been very happy here in ancient times. Sorry, times of yore. <laughs> to be accurate. Next, a visit to the city's theatre gives Will a chance to show off. Sorry, I mean, test the acoustics. <laughs> we 
going on to the terraced houses now, which we think are under those coverings. We live in a terraced house, don't we? Is we it do. similar to that? Well, let's Lorna, see. would you say? <laughs> What are we expecting? I don't really know, actually. You don't really know? Shall I, shall I tell her? Yes, I was going to say. I'm not sure what to expect. It's probably not like tooting, actually, <laughs> if I'm honest. Not that there's anything wrong with tooting. Let me just make that very clear. Yes. Uh, but these terrace houses were the, where the rich and the famous of Ephesus lived. Uh, not the likes of the uh, poor Christians like St. Paul. He probably wouldn't have been, even been allowed in the door. Uh, these were the big uh, rich houses. So kind of like in Pompeii, you see, with the painted... Uh, walls inside and uh, remarkably they've uh, survived in fairly good condition uh, considering they've been through quite a lot earthquakes the Arab invasions etc etc so let's go and have a look when Ephesus was really raking it in as a regional capital in the first century AD these big fancy houses as they were then were put up by locals who'd done good but maybe they didn't pay quite enough attention to our friend John and his chat about the end times, because by the 7th century, what with the harbour silting up and continual Arab raids, house prices in Ephesus really plummeted. The city was gradually reduced to a village, and the grand terraces ended up buried, only unearthed in the 1960s. Lorna, how's this on your terraced house scale? Is this oh. what you're expecting? It was better than what I was expecting, to be honest. I, better than tooting, I, terraced said houses. When terraced, I thought they were going to be in a row, but they're all stacked up into the hillside. Yeah, that sort of terrace. And you just keep going up and up and up, and there's more to see, including all these lovely paintings. Even in ancient Roman times, someone had to do the hoovering. After visiting the rest of the city, I finally found something worth filming. Darkest of Ephesus. Will's looking at the scale model. He's not interested in the dogs. Let's look at the dogs again. There they are, that's better. And on that canine contemplation, we come to the end of day two of our Turkish road trip. Coming up, divine grottos, mystic oracles, and a big fish. Stay tuned. <laughs>